this video I'm going to show you how to compute the variance very very manually which means that I'm going to do every part calculation and assign each part calculation to a variable and at the very end derive the variance and we'll do the standard deviation as a bonus at the uh, at the end uh, so number one thing we have to do is compute the mean uh, in order for us to be able to compute the deviation scores now to do this I'm going to do this uh, uh, by looking at the part calculations I need to calculate the sum of the exam data vector which is actually the same data the file that we have used in our earlier <coughs> homework uh, I'm going to assign this to the variable and I'm calling it sum exam data uh, when I activate this line uh, you see that there is no output uh, at this point but if I do want to view the output and see what this variable contains I can select the variable name and activate the selected portion and then you can see what that value is uh, next uh, I need to compute the sample size I'm going to call this uh, n uh, let's call it n.examData to be consistent and uh, we're going to use the length function to do this I activate this line I'll activate and output the value just so I can see that the, this the sample size is going to be 60 and I can double check my work I always like to double check my work with using another function or a different way of calculating the same thing just to make sure that I got it right so uh, first of all I do have to calculate the mean so I'm gonna call mean.examData is going to be uh, the sum.examData divided by m.examData uh, when I run this and I output this value I get 71.48 and so when I do my double checking uh, I'm going to just put exam data in here and I get the exact same value so now I know that I did my calcul I increase my confidence that I did my calculation right there's still of course a chance that I made an error outside of these calculations but uh, I have a fair bit of confidence that that um, this was done correctly so number two I need to calculate the deviation scores deviation scores and so deviation is uh, refers to deviation from the mean what we're gonna calculate is how far each of these numbers deviate from this mean score so we're gonna do 95.57 minus 71.48 74.91 minus 71.48 so on and so forth and so that is going to tell us uh, give us a snapshot of how much variability there is in the data uh, now in order for us to do this I'm going to do this again manually deviation uh, scores of exam data I'm just coming up with these variable names as I go and I try to follow my uh, naming scheme in this case uh, just separating each word in the variable name with a period um, exam data minus uh, the mean of exam data which was defined up here so I'm going to take the exam data which is every score in my vector and I'm going to take away the one value from here the 71.48 so when I run this I can see that the, there's no error so it was computed and I just want to peek into this so here what I'm expecting is not a single value as my answer but I'm expecting a, a, a vector and the vector has to be as long as my original data each with positive and negative scores and indeed this is what I'm finding here I see a bunch of positive and negative scores I don't know whether this is correct or not uh, I'm, I'd like to know but if I want to increase my confidence that it is correct what I've done I could do one thing here I could run the sum I could add up all of my deviation scores and guess what it should add up to zero and indeed this is a value as close as zero as possible this is 2.34 times 10 to the negative 13 this is in scientific notation for very 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 small numbers so imagine 0 0.00 13 zeros and then 234 so that's an extremely small number if I put round around this number so I round this value then obviously I'm gonna get zero it this is this is just a kind of a, a blip in uh, in the way R is just being extremely precise in its calculation but this is uh, in all practicality is zero and so this increases my confidence that uh, that um, um, 
the deviation scores were calculated correctly because deviation scores if summed up should add up to uh, zero now <laughs> in order uh, this is this is not very practical for us as a as a par uh, part calculation so what we're gonna do is we're going to square each of the deviation scores it's a little bit like taking the absolute value of it but uh, uh, in statistics as we go towards calculating correlations and variance and others it turns out that squaring is the way the, the practical thing to do so I'm gonna call this square deviation scores of exam data and all I'm gonna do is take the deviation scores variable and it autofills so when you see the little um, menu come up you can just select and press enter to uh, com autocomplete it's always better to autocomplete because you know that you didn't misspell anything and we raise it to the power of two to produce this little hat sign on most keyboards it's going to be shift six so <laughs> you run this uh, it looks like I did a computation and when I run this value now I can see that I only see positive values anytime you square something any negative value becomes positive so that this is a good sign that what I've done here the computation that I've done is correct and uh, I also see that uh, this is also in scientific notation so this is raised to the power of two to the power of three and these are positive values so they're not very small numbers they're actually very large numbers uh, just like here this is to the raised to the power of negative 13 which is a very small number these values are raised to the positive two threes uh, and so on and so forth so this appears to be correct and i'm going to move on to go to the next step uh, now in order for us to go towards calculating the sum we need to compute something called the sums of squares i'm also going to just call it ss for sums of squares and uh, this is very simple what we're going to do is simply sum up all of these squared deviation uh, values and so you can see that now the sums of squares is going to be a single value a sum of all of these part values and so now we're very very close to computing the variance uh, we just need uh, a calculation which is described in the textbook we need to compute something called uh, degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is a correction that is done to uh, data sets that represent a sample rather than a population a sample means that we have drawn a limited number of participants or data points from a large population of data points and anytime we work with a sample we are exposing ourselves to drawing a non-representative a biased sample and so this degrees of freedom is calculated and inserted in all calculations going forward in order to um, limit our vulnerability to correct for any uh, any potential biases in our sampling technique and degrees of freedom is very simple we can use our sample size which we have calculated up here on line six so I'm just going to refer back to that and I'm gonna say minus one so degrees of freedom is always sample size minus one uh, now that I have the degrees of freedom calculated the variance here is the hooray moment is going to be uh, the sums of squares divided by the degrees of freedom voila so this is our variance calculation and i can again double check because there's a one-liner for variance as you probably know already um, it's var and we can just put exam data in there and when i run that value i get the exact same number so this is variance and just as a bonus i quickly compute the um, standard deviation uh, we're going to use sd for that in my uh, variable naming scheme and we simply take the square root of our variance so here let me just assign this to a, a variable here so i can refer back to it i'll rerun that line of code and now i can call it and now when I call this we can see that the standard deviation is 27.63 and just to double check uh, with the other function the built-in function um, we get the identical value 
So there you go, variance calculated very, very manually. And as a bonus, here's the standard deviation as well.